Good morning, I'm Morgan Donner and today I want to show you how to weave a 15th century hem in the style of an obscure Norse settlement on the southern tip of Greenland because that's always a thing that you've needed in your life, right? Right. So we will cover the five W's later as well as the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, but for right now let's just jump right on in. Start off with the garment that you would like to hem. Do you have a nearly finished dress that you've been avoiding for over a year at this point because you are super darn intimidated by the exact technique that we're going to be attempting today? Because I don't know anybody like that. Anyways, go ahead and measure the hem that you're going to want to weave. Here I've folded my skirt into quarters so that I can fit the whole thing on camera frame for you. And it looks like it's about 35 inches, which times four is 140. So to create the warp of our woven hem, I'm going to need to measure out enough yarn to reach all the way around that 140 inch edge. My table here is 72 inches long, so wrapping around the edge of the table, top and bottom, like so, nets me a length of approximately 145. That's five inches longer than my hem, which did end up working out, but I would recommend adding maybe a few extra inches of ease here. It'll make it so much easier to finish up the hem in the end. To replicate the specific hem found on the original 15th century garment that I'm recreating, I've drawn out six lengths of warp thread. You are welcome to do more if you'd like a wider hem or just more coverage. Just make sure that you end up with an even number of threads. If working with a long length of threads like me, then I would recommend carefully winding or tying up the excess length. Dealing with tangles mid-project does not sound like fun to me. So to keep things neat, I started off with a slip knot and then crochet style chain stitched the length until I had just two feet left. If you've done this correctly, you should be able to just simply pull on that working end and undo the entire thing with ease. It's really meant to just be a temporary method to keep the thread detangled. Go ahead and toss a second slip knot about two feet from the free end. Now we can add the tablets or the weaving cards. These are usually square with a hole in each corner, although for today's technique, you actually only need two holes in opposite corners. So these reproduction bone tablets are fantastically similar to the extant tablets found in Greenland, which is so cool. But I figured that white cards on white thread with white fabric might just be a bit much. So I decided that I will use these lovely thin wooden cards that I have. If you don't have any cards, you can very easily just make them out of cardstock or even playing cards if you have a deck that you're willing to sacrifice for the purpose. Just cut the card into a square and punch holes in the corners. You'll need one card for each pair of threads. I'm using six threads, so three cards, but again, you can absolutely do more for a wider woven hem. Thread your yarn through opposite corners of your cards, making sure that you have both threads enter from the same side. Stack them together and knot your starting end, and we are ready to go. Find something sturdy to loop the second slip knot onto. I'm using a clamp just to start out with. You will need to secure the other end as well to yourself. You could pin it directly to your clothing, but that does potentially risk damaging your outfit. So I recommend a spare bit of twill or bias tape tied around your waist, kind of like a belt. Pin the starting knot to your waist tape, and now you have a hands-free tension on your warp thread. You can use a safety pin rather than a straight pin if that's your preference. Next, arrange up your cards so that they are able to turn fairly easily and freely without getting caught on each other. Make sure that the cards are all oriented the same way. The thread that is entering the card holes should look the same coming in from the same side. Just make sure that all of your cards look the same as each other and you should be fine. 
Before actually stitching the threads to the garment, I recommend that you weave a little starting tab. An inch or two is plenty. I mainly did this because I wasn't exactly sure how to start in right on the fabric, but I ended up finding that that inch of free woven tape super handy when finishing the hem back up in the end. So do recommend. To weave, twist the cards so that they create an opening in the threads. Fun fact, that's called the shed, that little opening and thread your weft yarn on a needle through the opening. So we are not gonna be using a shuttle for this weaving project because you're going to need to be able to uh, stitch into the fabric with every pass of your weft, which a shuttle simply won't do. For now, weave back and forth, turning the cards a full 180 degrees so that the threads that were on the bottom on your last stitch are now on top. Try to make sure that you are turning the cards in the same direction with every stitch. I'm rotating the top corner away from me at the moment, although you'll see that I end up flip-flopping throughout the project in order to untwist the threads when they've gotten too wound up. Now that we've got our starting tape complete, we're going to add a couple more elements to the equation here. I'm adding a single stitch into the fabric just to temporarily hold it in place so that I can also add filler threads below. The number of filler threads used on the original garments varies, so however many suits your fancy, I've gone ahead with four. For each new stitch, you need to travel through the shed, then down through the hem of the fabric, approximately a centimeter or so from the cut edge, and then travel around the filler threads before beginning your next stitch. So we are no longer gonna be going back and forth the way you weave fabric. Instead, we're going to continuously have the weft only ever traveling in some kind of a continuous spiral around the hem, the same direction for the duration of the rest of this project. Once you've gotten a bit of length and you'd like to go ahead and maybe set the project down for a bit, I like to secure the card so that they don't get up to mischief while I'm gone. Go ahead and grab a piece of wire approximately six inches long. I'm starting with a hairpin in case you happen to have the same style around. I then curve one end up at a 90 degree angle like so, and then add an additional little loop at the end. I've essentially created a very rudimentary safety pin here, which you could totally use instead if you have a big one, but I just didn't have any safety pins that were big enough, so instead I made this to hold my cards in place nicely. If you are feeling extra fancy, you can add a loop at the base, just like an actual safety pin, which is kind of fun. I learned so many things with this project. For example, it was surprisingly mobile. I was really worried that I would have to set up some sort of ornate post and loom situation, I don't know, and then be stuck there for who knows how many hours weaving. But by looping up the excess thread on my foot, I could actually sit pretty much anywhere. As I wove, I, I definitely started to develop a feel for how much tension I should have on those warp threads, how best to hold the thread and the fabric as I stitched, and, and how to start and end the weft threads. At first, I began a new thread by adding a running stitch in the fabric that I was about to weave over, but I found that kind of clumsy and not as clean looking as I would have liked. Eventually, I just simply incorporated an extra thread as part of the filler threads on the bottom and then picked it up again once I was ready to start weaving it in. I really really love trying new things. Sometimes it's a bit intimidating at first, you know, not knowing how to start or how it's going to turn out. You might even avoid the project for a year because you're nervous. Even if it doesn't turn out quite how you thought it might, I guarantee that you're going to end up getting the skills and knowledge to make a better attempt next time. If you are feeling the siren call of projects and skills yet unknown, but 15th century card weaving just isn't quite singing the right song, I cannot possibly understand why, but you know, you do you. You instead might want to try Skillshare, who have kindly sponsored today's video. When I first joined Skillshare, I was initially really drawn to the film, video, photography type selections, uh, probably because that most directly relates to my sewing creation projects. But productivity is where I found myself really 
feeling at home. Lindsay Holmes did such an amazing class about productivity using Evernote. I, folks, I'm just an absurdly disorganized person. But hearing her talk about finding ways to make a system work for you personally just speaks to the chaotic parts of my soul that are in need of alphabetizing, I guess. There's also a bunch of classes about animation, which kind of scare me and also super entice me, which is, I think, low key my most favorite feeling in the world. So if it's also your favorite feeling, then consider giving Skillshare a try. The first 1000 people that use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. There are just so many cool creative projects for you to explore. Have fun trying something new. Back to my current skill adventure, I'm going to be using my creative freedom to go weave in the park. Now that everything is all set up, all I need is my scissors, waist tape, yarn, and dress. JK, lol. <laughs> uh, apparently it rained last night and I am not going to sit in this. Instead, I found a perfectly lovely dry couch to sit upon instead. Bonus, I can watch spooky Halloween movies, which would not have been possible in the park, so win-win. Small update on the homemade safety pin. I figured out that it actually works even better if you secure the card corners to the fabric from underneath. Obviously that is more or less feasible depending on your particular fabric, but it worked really, really well for me. If your fillet threads are about to run out, I have found it very handy to get a length of yarn, fold it in half, and then thread the loop end of it through the previous filler thread loop. At first, I would try to just sort of butt the two ends together, but that was really messy. This way is so much better. About halfway through, I started to wonder how long the hem took to weave. I admit it felt like it was taking a million years, but I went ahead and measured three different half hour stitch sessions, which averaged out to about 6.5 inches per 30 minutes or just under 11 hours for the whole hem. So that feels like a very deceptively short amount of time, but maybe that's what happens when you're watching too many Halloween movies instead of like diligently concentrating on stitching for most of the hem. As I got to the end of my hemming journey, I, I became increasingly nervous. I was, I was playing chicken with my warp threads and just barely ended up having enough. Once I could no longer keep turning the cards because I just simply run out of room, I cut them loose and then hid the remaining threads underneath my starting point tape. It only took a moment to tuck away all six of those threads and then I could use the starting weave to cover the end. I tried to stitch it down by following the same channel as the, uh, the weft thread. The overlap point between the start and end is maybe a little bit bulky, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with how relatively unobtrusive it is. So final thoughts. I'm happy with how this turned out. I definitely had some slight doubts given how narrow this hem is. I was concerned that it was so narrow that it would just sort of fray out, but it seems pretty darn sturdy. Only time will tell how much it will actually hold up, but 
I suspect it'll do just fine. The skirt is at a very nice length, about an inch or so up off the ground, even more if I have the dress belted, so wear and tear from brushing up against the ground should be fairly minimal. And since everything is wool, just like the original accent garments from Harry Olsness, I imagine that it will all just sort of felt together more and more over time and become like a solid mass of wool. I can sort of see the appeal of doing a hem like this. Weaving fabric was an incredibly labor-intensive process, and the, the clothing that you made from it would therefore be a very precious commodity. Adding a lot of reinforcement along the hem would make it so much harder for it to you know, catch on something and tear, theoretically extending the life of this very expensive garment and making it something that a person could wear for many, many, many years, which I think is particularly important when you only own a few garments, you need them to be as heckin' sturdy as possible. For those of you that have been following my Harry Olsen's gown recreation progress, this was almost the last step. I have a couple more loose ends, <laughs> literally, to stitch up, but soon, soon, Harry Olsen's is coming. <laughs>